you working on AR? No, I'm reading my Bible. Since we were learning about Judges, I thought I would read Ruth. Oh yeah, Ruth takes place the same time as Judges. What? Why would you look on a roof for a bunch of Judges? I said Ruth. Why is she on the roof? <laughs> no, we're reading the book of Ruth. It's a story about God's redemption. Did she get arrested? What? Did she get arrested? <gasps> is that why she has to see a judge? No, no, no. Ruth is in the time of the judges. So why don't you listen as I read? Oh, okay. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem and Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, Malan and Killian also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Wow, this is kind of a downer. <gasps> Can we skip to the exciting part where she robs a bank or steals a car and gets arrested? Ruth does not get arrested. This is important. Most women in those times were dependent on a male family member to provide for them. If a woman's husband died, her sons would take care of her, but Naomi had no one. That's right. Now let's get back to the story. I've heard there's no longer a famine in Judah. I'm going back to my hometown. Go back to your father's homes and find new husbands. No, let us stay. I want to come with you. I will never leave you. But does it look like I have more sons to spare? Go back to your people. I'll never forget you. Ruth, go back to your people and your gods. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people are my people and your God is my God. Very well, but it's not going to be easy. Naomi, is that you? I haven't seen you for ages. Don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. The Almighty has made me bitter. I went away full, came back with nothing. Absolutely nothing. But you have, I'm all alone. Aren't you forgetting? I've got no family, no one to help me. Ain't that a shame. Oh my stars, isn't that simply tragic? Isn't it though? What's with the southern accent? She is originally from Beersheba. Oh. And who is this lovely young lady who's got here, Naomi? That's my daughter in law, Ruth. What tribe are you from, dear? Dan? Benjamin? Oh, I'm not an Israelite. I'm from Moab. Oh, isn't that interesting? Well, uh, we better get going now. Was that who I think it was? Mm -hmm. And have I got a story for you. You know how her and her kid went off to Moab? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, all the men in her family are dead. <gasps> you don't say. Dead as a doornail. Tell her about the daughter-in-law. Well. This is the best part. Before her son bit the dust, he married a Moabite woman. <gasps> what? Simply scandalous. Welcome home, Naomi. So nice to meet you, Ruth. We better go spread the news. We've so little money and nothing to eat. We must find a way to acquire food cheaply. And Aldi won't be invented for several millennia. Don't worry, I'll go gleaning in the fields. 
Why would being sparkly help feed them? What on earth are you talking about? Ruth said she would go gleaming in the fields. Gleaning, gleaning. To go gleaning in the fields means to pick up food left by the harvesters. God left instructions for the old in the Old Testament not to pick up, not to harvest the edges or pick up the bits they drop. This food was left for the poor. Now let's continue. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. How good was the harvest? It was good last year, but I think it will be better this year. Who's that young woman over there? Oh, uh, that's the woman from Moab. She came here with Naomi a few days ago. She's been working hard to collect food for Naomi herself. You don't say. Hi, I'm Boaz. Hi, I'm Ruth. Why don't you stick around and follow behind my harvesters? Thank you. Why are you showing me such kindness? I heard what you were doing for Naomi. Well, that's cool. May the Lord reward you. May I continue to find favor in your eyes. Totally. Uh, you want to grab some lunch? I'd love to. Did you see who was gleaning in Boaz's field? Was it that Moabite woman? <gasps> it is! Well, ain't she rather bold? Isn't she? I can't believe a nice Israelite boy like him would pay any attention to that foreign girl. Well, don't forget that his mother was a Canaanite. Apple don't fall far from the tree. Oh, Salmon, dear, please get your feet off the table. Oh, sorry. Hello, parents. Hello, Boaz. How was the harvest today? We harvest a lot of crops. And I met a young, a young uh, woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. Oh, really? It's amazing how she, she left her homeland to come to a new place just to help her mother-in-law. May the Lord richly renew, reward her. Wait a minute, what in the world is a Batman steamer? She said Kinsman Redeemer. Kinsman Redeemer. I'm still just as confused. A Kinsman Redeemer is a relative of someone whose job it was to purchase any property they needed to sell so that it stayed in the family. It was also the Kinsman Redeemer's job to marry the widow so that she would be taken care of. Ruth, I feel as though it is my responsibility to make sure you are taken care of. I have a plan, but you must trust me. What do you have in mind? Do you have any idea what his feet probably smell like at the end of the day? <laughs> okay, okay, but there's more. All right, I'll do what you say. Who's there? It's me, Ruth. What are you doing here? 
Well, remember when you said you would, God would reward me for taking care of Naomi? Yes. Well, how would you like to be my reward? What? Do you want to marry me? Yes. But there's another king's redeemer that's first in line. I'll go speak to him first thing in the morning. Hello, friends. You might want to have a seat for this. Yes, what can I do for you? Naomi's selling your land that is a relative of us, and his name was Elimelech. Would you like to buy it? Yes, absolutely. Congratulations. May you have many children. Children? I don't want any children. Oh, did I forget to say that it comes with a wife? A wife? I don't want a wife. It's it's kind of a package deal. I have an own family of my own. You can have the land and the wife. brings us together today. Love to love man and wife. Let's party! Come and see my new grandbaby. the sweetest baby. What's his name? Oh, bad. May he be famous in Israel. If not, then his grandson. Isn't Ruth just better than seven sons? I told you she'd turn out fine, just fine. Didn't I? I told them. I told them. I most definitely told them. Then Obed went on to have Jesse, and Jesse had a son named David. The David? The one who became king? That's the one. This is even more exciting. Listen to this note in my Bible. Well, God used, the, used Boaz to redeem Ruth and Naomi from a life of poverty. He was also look, working through this family to redeem his church. God would send his son, Jesus the Messiah, through this family. He was the ultimate redeemer. You keep using that word redeem. What does it mean? To redeem means to buy back something by paying debt. God's justice demands punishment for sin. That's the debt we owe. Jesus paid that debt for us through his death on the cross. He is our redeemer. That's amazing. It's like God was showing us in the Old Testament what he was going to do for us. Exactly. That's right. So I guess there wasn't a story about someone getting arrested after all. Well, we could read about Joseph. Yeah!